Hey guys, it's Taylor Swift, and today I'm going to talk to you about Easter eggs. No, not the bunny pastel Easter eggs, although I really do love that aesthetic right now. I'm loving pastels. But um, yeah, Easter eggs that I'm going to talk to you about are the kind of cryptic message sending Easter eggs. Um, when you're watching a movie or a music video and you notice something in the background, and that something leads to sort of behind the scenes information, that's an Easter egg. So I love to communicate via Easter eggs. Um, I think the best messages are cryptic ones. So um, I'm gonna <laughs> lead you through my favorite kinds of Easter eggs to lay. Easter eggs can be left on clothing or jewelry. This is one of my favorite ways to do this because you wear something that foreshadows something else um, and people don't really usually find out this one immediately, but they know you're probably sending a message. They'll figure it out in time. Lots of examples of this exist over the history of my career, which I hope they have put near my face. A specific way you can leave Easter eggs is on nails. I'm not doing it right now. I just like glitter. But uh, there was a specific occasion where I did a Spotify vertical video for Delicate and I painted my nails the exact color tones that I wanted the next album to be. Um, some people picked up on it immediately, others picked up on it a few months down the line, but it made me feel nice to know that, you know, when you plan something that far in advance, it's kind of, you're actually kind of just flexing on planning. That's what an Easter egg really does. <laughs> you're really just like, I planned this two years in advance. Another way that I really like to use Easter eggs is I like to plant them um, in set design for photo shoots or music videos. I like to, um, I like to put coded messaging, sort of, um, you can see like a sign on a building or something on a wall, graffiti, a code that has me opening a door could be something significant. Um, and you know, I really started doing this in music videos much more during the Reputation album because I wasn't doing interviews. And so I, I still wanted to be able to communicate messages to the fans. And so the Easter eggs really went into overdrive. I think the most Easter eggy video of my entire career thus far is Look What You Made Me Do. Literally the whole video is just an Easter egg. It's like thousands of Easter eggs. There are some that people still haven't found. It will be decades before people find them all. I'm gonna take you now back to my original favorite way of Easter egg dropping. And that is my first album. Um, it's encoding messages into the lyrics. This was how I first started doing this. You know, I just thought, why not capitalize random letters and see if the fans figure out that if you take all the random letters and you put them together, it spells out like little codes, secret messages. It could be one secret message per song, but then in other albums I had it, I had a secret message, like a story that would go throughout all the lyrics. I like this because to me it makes people read the lyrics, it makes an album more of an event. Um, Easter, egg, Easter eggs are a way to really sort of expand the experience of seeing something or hearing music. Another way you can drop hints and leave an Easter egg is hints in print. Uh, I'll do an interview that's supposed to come out way before something else that's supposed to come out and I'll foreshadow this thing that's supposed to come out in this interview that I do that comes out way before this thing comes out. So, um, for example, I did an, a magazine interview where I mentioned Brendan Urie, I mentioned his band Panic at the Disco. You know, months before anyone would then find out that I had done a song with him. I also had a calendar in my merch line. On this calendar, I made sure to put a wax seal stamp of a 13 on April 13th, because I had an idea ages ago that I wanted to do a 13-day countdown starting on April 13th. So many 13s. Anyway, people started noticing there's a wax seal on this date. What's going on with this date? And sure enough, that was the date that we started the countdown for the new album and the new song and the whole, you know, thing. 
Another way that an Easter egg can express your message is through symbolism. So a lot of the time I'll pick something that I think symbolizes something else. Like I'll pick a snake as sort of the mascot for, um, you know, feeling misunderstood or, you know, being somebody that, that is not going to strike unless they're stepped on. Or a butterfly, which is like kind of just breaking free of that kind of, um, that darkness and, you know, fluttering into the light. Um, or a palm tree. I did a post on my Instagram and I posted seven palm trees and I posted it on the day I finished my seventh album. And a palm tree symbolizes rebirth, new beginnings, positive energy. So. And the last thing I will mention is my go-to Easter eggs. These are things that they may not lead to something in the future, but they're just a tribute to my love for them. Those things are 13s and cats. If you see a cat in symbolism in my Easter egg situation, that's just because I love cats. It's really that, it's that simple. Sometimes it means nothing other than just like reminding you how much I love cats. Also, the number 13, really close to my heart. I will pick dates. I'll pick really important dates just because the numbers of that date add up to 13. It's a, it rules my life. So, um, you know, any, any <laughs> Easter egg fiend has their go-tos. Those are mine. So thank you so much for sitting down with me to talk about Easter eggs, which I'm sure I enjoyed much more than you did. My cover of Entertainment Weekly is out, so if you want to check that out, who knows, there could be Easter eggs all throughout that thing. You just, you know, you never know with me. See ya!